Hello everyone, the topic of this video is how to compute the velocities of two impacting rigid bodies using the Maxwell diagram. The Maxwell diagram is based on Newton's impact law, which assumes centric impact. In order to understand what a centric impact means, let's draw two impacting rigid bodies. So this is going to be rigid body 1 with mass m1 and this other one is rigid body 2 with mass m2. Now, um, Newton's impact law assumes that during the impact these two rigid bodies have only one contact point which is denoted by k on this figure. It also assumes that the tangent line of these two rigid bodies in the contact point is the same. It is shown with green color on the figure and vector t shows the tangent vector. Okay, now if we draw a line which is perpendicular to the tangent line and goes through the contact point, then this line is called the normal line of the impact and its direction is the normal direction which is denoted by n. We talk about a centric impact if, for, if the centroid of both rigid bodies is on the normal line. That is, if this S1 centroid of rigid body 1 and S2 centroid of rigid body 2 are on this um, blue normal line. Okay, let us assume that we know the velocity of S1 right before the impact and let's denote this velocity vector with c1. We also assume that we know velocity vector c2 of the centroid of the second rigid body. We also want to assume that the angular velocity of both rigid bodies is zero that is, capital omega 1 and capital omega 2 are 0. Newton's impact law uh, is or says that during the impact only the norm normal component of these velocity vectors change. That means that if we project C1 on the normal direction and we get C1n and we project it to the tangential direction and we get C1t then out of these two components of C1 only C1t will change or sorry only C1n will change and C1t remains the same during the impact the very same can be said for C2, so here C2n will change and the tangential component C2t will remain the same during the impact. Now, if m1, m2, the tangential direction t, and c1, c2 vectors are given, we can use the Maxwell diagram in order to compute the velocities of centroids s1 and s2 right after the impact. So we will use Maxwell's diagram. For the Maxwell diagram, we first have to draw 
a reference line. This line is a horizontal line and this will correspond to the normal direction. Then we have to draw a line perpendicular to this reference line which, which will um, stand for the zero velocities. After we are done with this we have to place S1 which stands for the centroid of rigid body 1 so we have to place this point on this vertical line and if we place it such a way then this distance must be proportional to M2 and now centroid S2 cannot be placed arbitrarily, arbitrarily on this vertical line it must be placed on such a way that S2 would be a distance or with a distance from this reference line that is proportional to M1. Okay, if we place S1 and S2, we can draw two horizontal lines through these points. And then we can start putting these normal components S1n and S2n on this diagram. Let's rescale these vectors on such a way that this would be C1n and this other vector would be C2n. Okay, the next step is to draw a line between the two endpoints of C1n and C2n. This line will intersect our reference line and that will give us this yellow line. And this yellow line will give the magnitude of vector Csn which vector is the normal velocity component of the common centroid of rigid bodies 1 and 2. Okay, Newton's impact law um, assumes that during impact the common centroid of the two rigid bodies have constant velocity. Okay, this means that right before the impact and right after the impact the velocity of this common centroid does not change. That means that Csn will be equal to Vsn which is the velocity of the common centroid or the normal component of the velocity of the common centroid of these two rigid bodies. Okay, so velocities uh, with letter C stand for uh, velocities right before the impact and vectors denoted by V stand for velocities right after the impact. Okay, now we know the normal component of the velocity of the common centroid, but this is not what we want to determine. What we really want to determine is the velocity of the two centroids, S1 and S2, right after the impact. Now we can determine these by drawing a vertical line which goes through the endpoint of Csn. And then let's denote this distance between this vertical line and the endpoint of C1n by delta C. And if there is a k parameter given, which is the coefficient of restitution, then we can measure a distance on the left side of this, um, this dashed line with length k times delta c. Okay, the endpoint of this distance can be connected with uh, s1 and a vector 
V1n can be determined, which will be the normal component of centroid S1 right after the impact. Okay, we can do the very same thing for C2n. We can measure this distance between the endpoint of C2n and the dashed line. Let's name it smaller case delta C. And let's multiply it with K and measure it to the right hand side of this dashed line. Okay, now we can connect the endpoint of this um, domain with the endpoint of C or uh, the endpoint S2. Okay, and if we connect these two points, we will get V2n. Now, the endpoint of V2n and endpoint of V1n gives us this straight dashed line, which have to go through or which has to go through the endpoint of CSN. Now, we know the two normal components of these two velocity vectors uh, corresponding to the centroids of these rigid bodies right after the impact. But the question is not just the normal component, but also the tangential components of these vectors. Let's see how we can determine these tangential components. So I will redraw um, the velocities right before the impact. So this is C1 and this one is N. We projected C1 onto vector, normal vector N and we got C1n. We did the very same thing in the tangential direction and we got C1t. Okay, as I mentioned it at the beginning of this video, the tangential components do not change during the impact. This means that C1t will be equal to C1 or V1t. But the normal components will change, and as we see, C1n will be decreased after the impact, and we get V1n. Okay, so let's measure V1n here, and if we add up these two vectors, V1t and V1n, we will get V1, which is the velocity vector of centroid S1 right after the impact. And we can do the very same thing for C2. Let's do it very quickly. So this is vector C2. This is the normal direction. Then we project C2 onto the normal direction and also in the tangential direction. Okay, C2t and C2n. Now, C2t won't change because in the tangential direction the velocities remain the same during the impact. But C2n will change. As we see, C2n will increase with a bit more than 50%, so let's draw V2t, or sorry, V2n, and summing up V2t and V2n, we will get vector V2, which is the velocity vector of S2 right after the impact. Okay, summarizing what we have learned in this video is that if two rigid bodies 
collide one having a mass m1 the other one m2 and we know the tangential direction in the contact point and we also know the velocities of the centroids of these two rigid bodies and this impact is centric then we can use the Maxwell diagram to compute the velocities of the centroids of these two rigid bodies right after the impact. So the question comes up, what happens when the impact is not centric but eccentric? Well, the answer is easy because all eccentric impacts can be reduced to centric impacts with the introduction of reduced mass and center of percussion. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that it was useful. See you in the next one. Goodbye.